Jesus Christ of glory. He's been the biggest inspiration in my life and truly has brought me to an understanding that has took my art to a whole new level and it's guided by appreciation, uh, love, kindness, and just an open-mindedness that really brings me information as I study my surroundings and as I teach myself day in and day out. But today what we're going to talk about guys is what to do when you get yourself a brand new airbrush. And this is my advice, my personal preference. Again, everyone does it, may have a different way of doing things, but this is the way I do it. So what we got yourself here is a Renegade Velocity by Badger Airbrush. It's their newest airbrushes uh, on their Renegade line. I currently use their Spirit and a little bit of Velocity. And here it is. This is a new airbrush. Just opened it. Um, from the package just not too long ago. So this is what we do here. There's a couple things you could do. The first thing is take off your handle, okay, and expose the needle in the rocker assembly. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna check and take a look at the spring tension on our trigger. Now this whole mechanism controls the spring tension on this airbrush, okay? So the more the and what that means is it controls how st stiff or how much tension you have on your airbrush. I forgot I had some paint in this cup. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pour it out. Okay. Now, if, once you pull back your trigger, if you're feeling a little bit of too much uh, tension, what you can do here is loosen up that tension right here on the adjuster so just open it up here all the way so you get the tension right where you want it okay now if you open up the tension too much you'll have zero tension on that trigger there now what that means is there'll be no tension from this little lever at all pushing up against that trigger but if you just tighten it up in just nice and slowly you'll get that tension that you want, that subtle tension that makes this airbrush run like a Cadillac. And that's, all, that's what I like to explain it as. I like my airbrushes running like Cadillac, super smooth. That way I can feel every little nick and bump and cranny as I pull back this trigger. Now another way of setting these to the maximize uh, spring tension softness is by just giving yourself a little bit of gap in between this here adjuster and the needle chuck. All right, you see how there's a little bit of space there? Now, if there's no space, what will happen is there'll be no tension on that trigger, and it'll kind of flop back and forth, okay? But once you start up screwing that lever in, you'll see there's tension on the trigger, and when you pull back the trigger, it'll be nice and soft. Now, that's the way I like it, so I can feel any interruption inside the airbrush. If there's a little booger clogged in there or whatnot, I'll be able to feel it on the trigger because it's so gentle, so delicate, uh, so soft. Okay, to further soften the action of this airbrush, we're going to go ahead and remove the needle. Okay, I'm going to tighten the chuck. That way when I unloosen this lever here, everything comes out in one piece. Okay, trigger's going to go to the side. Here's the body. Now, this here is the mechanism for the trigger to move back and forth. There's nothing much to this, guys. And by the way, do not feel at any, any way intimidated to take this airbrush apart. There's not much to these airbrushes. It's a very simple um, gadget or tool. It's just not a lot to it. And a lot of times when we first start airbrushing, it's like you don't want to take it apart, you feel intimidated, you feel that you won't put it back together properly. Well, there's nothing much to these airbrushes, guys. It's a very simple tool here to use in terms of putting it back together. It's not like you're taking apart a TV or VCR. There's simple mechanics here. Okay, and this, again, this is these the system on how the trigger shoots right back into its original position because this lever right here just pops it back as you pull the trigger back it shoots the trigger forward see this is how it looks inside the body you're pulling the trigger back just like so and you see that go back and the needle moves back with it and the needle is retracted in the airbrush just like that retracted out of the tip and it creates space for that tip to open up and, and paint to flow around the needle into the tip and out of the airbrush with the siphoning. 
and also the gravity on this airbrush. Some airbrushes force only has the siphoning force from the front here. You're creating that siphoning action that siphons the paint out of the bottle. In this case, you've got the siphoning action from the air pushing uh, around the tip, and you also have the gravity action that forces paint out of the out of the airbrush. That's why you can feel a little more response come from a gravity feed airbrush, just because you have a little bit help from gravity forcing the paint out. Okay, so back to this here, um, guys. Really easy to take apart. All this has in here is a you you uh, unscrew the truck and you expose the spring. Now, like I said, you can make this airbrush performing smoother by, this is what I do, I lube this whole spring here with some, uh, some sort of oil, WD-40, uh, airbrush oil, they sell in the art stores. You can get it at Coast Airbrush or WebAirbrushes.com, uh, Air, um, Bear Air, a lot of places carry this stuff. Uh, but I use WD-40, it works really well, and this creates a real nice, smooth, flowing airbrush. And I do this to all my airbrushes when I get them. So I'll soak this whole little thing in, in WD-40, the inside, the outside, everything. I'll load it back to my airbrush, screw it in, just like that. You know, if it locks up, you just pull this back, realign it. It usually locks up when you're screwed in because it, it uh, attaches itself to, to one of the lips of, uh, of this part here. I don't know the name of it, but if you find it just not wanting to screw in, just pull this back and reset it. Okay. Then you get your trigger in play, put the trigger right where it needs to be, on the directly, oop, directly parallel with the pin that's inside, I'll show you right now. Okay, you put the trigger parallel with this little pin that's in here that once the pin is depressed downward, it opens up air to come out of the airbrush. Okay, and then this little lever, just let that thing pop right up, just like that. The tension gets adjusted right where it needs to be, just like so. A little bit of space there, okay? Loosen the needle chuck, insert the needle just like that right back in, okay? All the way in, and you'll feel it stop. You don't want to push it too hard, but enough to feel it stop and feel metal to metal. Now, if you're feeling any sort of softness as you enter it in, there might be something clogged in your tip. You'll have to take that whole part out, look at your tip, and make sure there's nothing in your tip if it's going in too soft. You want to feel it kind of hit an abrupt stop and kind of feel metal hitting. Now, sometimes, like I said, you'll notice a clog if it feels cushiony. That's because there's an acrylic particle in there or any particle you're using uh, you know, from, from your paint. So that's another important, important tip. Again, by softening up this trigger, I mean this lever right here loosens up the spring tension, makes your airbrush run like a Cadillac. Super smooth, okay? Another thing you could do is pull your needle out, put some oil on here, airbrush oil, slide it right back in, just like that. That way no paint sticks to your needle back here. That way when you're done using your airbrush, okay, you get the needle out, put the oil on, put the needle back in here, and when you go to use it again, it, the needle's not stuck in the body from paint dried up. That oil is keeping the paint from attaching itself to the needle and body, creating a glued uh, needle in the body of the airbrush. It's another tip for you guys out there. Okay, and that's pretty much it, guys. That's what I do when I, uh, you know, buy a new airbrush, lube it up, make it nice and soft. That way, this thing's running like a caddy, super smooth. Um, another tip is on the I have on the trucker hat D, uh, video, and it talks about how to seal the front in case there's any air leaks. Keeps the airbrush running nice and nice and clean, and the lines running flawless. So I hope this helped you guys. Don't be intimidated. Buy an airbrush. Take that sucker apart at least 10, 20 times before you use it, guys. You want to make sure you know your airbrush in and out. That way, when you come up into a problem, you can solve it quickly. Hi, Rodriguez, guys. Great more videos coming. Check him out. See ya.